In most cases, enzymes don't work independently, but rather they work sort of as a team. A lot of times what will happen is in our bodies, we'll have an initial substrate that gets modified by one enzyme. So it makes a little bit of a change to the molecule. And then there'll be another enzyme that sort of picks up that uh, molecule and makes another slight change to it. And that just keeps going on and on and on. There's a whole chain of enzymes that work in order to produce some final product. So this is called a metabolic pathway. Uh, metabolism refers to all of the reactions that are taking place in the body. And a metabolic pathway is just that. It's a pathway of reactions that have to take place. This could either be um, a linear chain like shown here, or it could be something more like a web where at some point there will be a, a substrate that multiple enzymes could act upon. Okay, so either this substrate could head down this pathway or this one, either is a possibility. And what I'd like to do is focus in on this possibility, this web for just a minute and talk about control. How can pathways be controlled? This is going to bring us back to the idea of negative feedback. Okay, so let's look at this. End product inhibition is what this is called. That name will make sense in just a minute. Okay, so let's follow this pathway. This is a metabolic pathway where we start with uh, molecule A, substrate A, and that gets modified a little bit by this enzyme to form substrate B, which gets modified a little bit by this enzyme to form substrate C. And here's where we have a branch possible. Okay, so either this substrate could be taken up by this enzyme, or it could be taken up by this enzyme. In practice, probably both are gonna happen. Remember, there are actually probably thousands of, of C molecules present um, in the system. Okay, so some of them will head down this pathway, others will head down this pathway. So in the end, what we end up with is some molecules of F and some molecules of F prime. All right, now here's the interesting thing. When F prime, when its levels build up a little bit, so when we start to have a good amount of F prime present in the system, what it will do is come back and bind to an earlier enzyme. It'll actually bind to it. And when it binds, that's going to cause this enzyme's shape to change a little bit and that sort of messes up its active site. So essentially what's happening is this is shutting off this pathway. Okay, there's no way to make more F prime because this enzyme has been deactivated. So that's a negative feedback loop, right? We, we were heading down this pathway, F prime was accumulating, but once its level started to get a little bit too high, um, its own presence acts to deactivate this pathway and then the levels will no longer be increasing. Right? They'll either stay steady or they'll start to decline. Okay, so then in the end, um, this is the only pathway that can be taken. So we say that this pathway is favored and this one is inhibited. So that's end product inhibition. This was the end product and it worked to inhibit an earlier enzyme in the pathway. There are some diseases that can result from mistakes or errors in metabolism. If, if metabolism is not able to be completed, if one of these pathways doesn't work correctly, that can lead to a number of different diseases. Um, probably the most familiar example on this list is lactose intolerance. Uh, so if a person has trouble digesting lactose, that's the sugar that's in milk, um, why is that? Why do some people have trouble digesting lactose? Well, it's because um, of, a, of a, an error in the metabolism of that sugar. So one of the enzymes in that pathway is just not able to function correctly. It's not able to carry out its reaction. And the end result of that is that the person probably has diarrhea anytime that they um, ingest something with lactose. So there are a lot of different diseases listed out here. Again, I'm not expecting you to memorize this table, but I would like for you to take a look at it and get an idea of some examples of things that can come up as a result of problems with metabolism.